Good, happy Monday morning, January 6th, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to for this Monday morning, so let's begin. First step, 2.0. One magnitude earthquake felt in Tilton on Sunday. A small earthquake hit the Granite State on Sunday night. The U.S. Geological Survey reported the 2.1 magnitude earthquake was centered in Tilton. The quake occurred around 8 45 p.m. There were no reports of any damage. More information can be found at the USGS website. Investigators trying to determine if weather was factor in Deering crash. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Thanks so much. Right now, investigators are trying to determine if slippery road conditions in the town of Deering played a factor in this single car crash. A portion of North Road is back open tonight after fire officials say a Toyota Corolla slid off the road and into a tree. That driver was taken to the hospital with injuries. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New England Reptile Expo held in Manchester on Sunday. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. for the whole family. The difference is Disney. Well, they're back. Thousands of animals are in New Hampshire today for the New England Reptile Expo. Snakes, lizards, and turtles were among the reptiles on display at the Doubletree Hotel in Manchester. Thousands of people came out to see the animals and pet supplies for sale. It's a unique pet. Again, low maintenance, and there's that kind of cool factor that goes along with owning like a python of any kind. And um, and I think, you know, people are just fascinated with it. Yeah, a big crowd there, too. If you missed it this time, the expo comes back on April 5th. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. It looks like a good event there. New Hampshire foreign policy experts weigh in on impact of Somalia killing. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. insurance for veterans like Martin. When his wife retired, they bought oh. switched to USA insurance for low rates and higher standards. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. USAA. You strike at a senior official of the Iranian government, who, by the way, is a terrible guy, 
and it has consequences. Jake Sullivan of the Carsey School of Public Policy at UNH says the U.S. has now entered a period of extreme risk. Risk that we end up in a direct military confrontation with Iran as the result of further escalation. Under the Obama administration, Sullivan was involved in the secret negotiations that led to the Iranian nuclear deal. When the nuclear deal was in place, before Trump tore it up, None of this was happening. We didn't have this cycle of escalation and conflict. Iran announcing today it is abandoning the limits of that deal. Which obviously moves them down the track towards a nuclear capability. Sullivan says the U.S. counterterrorism mission against the remnants of ISIS in Iraq is also in jeopardy. The Iraqi parliament has just voted in response to the strike to kick U.S. forces out of Iraq, which would make it much more difficult for us to keep pressure on ISIS. Homeland Security here in New Hampshire is actively engaged with federal intelligence partners. They are reminding people if they see something, to say something. And always protect yourself against possible cyber threats. So not clicking on links from uh, unknown senders or making sure that you're not sending personal identifiable information via email. State safety officials want to remind the public that Homeland security starts with hometown security, so it's important to report anything you think is out of place in your community. Live in the studio, Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Several presidential candidates expected to appear at college convention in Manchester. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Tim Callery. So Chevy Silverado offers an optional technology package with up to 15 different views, including one enhanced view that Former New Hampshire Governor John H. Sununu makes the opening remarks for College Convention 2020. New England College has been hosting the event every four years since 2000. There's pretty much only four states in the country that can try to do this, but we're the only college convention there is in the country. 2020 hopefuls from both sides of the aisle are expected to make appearances in a series of town hall meetings. Democrat Michael Bennett was the first on Sunday night. Students are very eager to talk to them, to ask questions, um, to really have their voice heard. But where do these young Americans stand during this primary season? Well, some say they have their candidates selected. I am employed for Amy Klobuchar. You are? Yes. Why so? Um, because she is a centrist that is running for all of America. I support President Trump, and I, I have for a while, but I, I think it's also really important to look at the candidates that are coming to this, this platform and, and speaking, because they also have ideas that, that are interesting to me as well. I definitely have a top one. John Delaney is right up there. I know he's not so popular right now, but I'm really hoping he goes through because he has a lot of awesome uh, environmental action Plans. While others are still testing the waters and are hoping this convention may help them make a decision down the road. I think I have a top three, uh, but I'm always shifting, and that changes week by week depending on what, what's happened. And now students we spoke with tonight say the issues they'll really be watching on the campaign trail involve the environment, college debt, and the economy. This convention is set to wrap up. On Thursday, I'm live here in Manchester, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Twenty twenty Golden Globes, seven biggest moments you may have missed. They were on last night on NBC, and I was watching some of it last night. Let's take a look at that video from Axis Hollywood. And I want to say hi to my folks, because, hey, they're back in the Ozarks. I, I wanted to bring my mom, but I couldn't, because... Any woman I stand next to, they say I'm dating. And, um, just be awkward.
I'm out as a blast with the family sitting down front like that. Okay, and there you go. Looks like it was a fun event last night there. Trump responds to Iran threats. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. President Trump is on his way back to Washington tonight from Mar-a-Lago with that warning to Iran and that tweet, putting Congress on notice. Democrats say the White House is at risk of drawing the U.S. into another endless war. ABC's David Wright is in West Palm Beach, Florida. Tonight, President Trump is practically daring the Iranians to retaliate, informing Congress by tweet, should Iran strike any U.S. person or target, the United States will quickly and fully strike back and perhaps in a disproportionate manner. That sort of saber-rattling worries Democrats. Well, I really worry that the actions the president took will get us into what he calls another endless war in the Middle East. Uh, he promised we wouldn't have that, and I think we're closer to that now because of his actions. The president has indeed repeatedly called for ending costly foreign wars. The plan is to get out of endless wars, to bring our soldiers back home, to not be policing agents all over the world. He said so as recently as New Year's Eve, specifically referring to Iran. I want to have peace. I like peace. And Iran should want peace more than anybody. But that night at Mar-a-Lago, the wheels were already in motion. After the president saw the protests at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad and blamed Iran, according to the New York Times, aides presented the president with a variety of options. Times reports he chose the most extreme one. Around 5 p.m. January 2nd, he made the final call, authorizing the drone strike that killed General Soleimani. Some Democrats say there's no mystery about the timing. Days before the impeachment process is set to resume. We know he's deeply upset about that. And I think people are reasonably asking, why this moment? Why does he pick now to take this highly inflammatory highly dangerous action that moves us closer to war. David Wright joins us now from West Palm Beach, Florida, where the president was spending the holiday. David, we just heard Senator Warren alluding to the timing of all this. We do know the impeachment process is still ongoing, now headed for the next phase, a Senate trial. That's right. A trial at some point, Tom. The question is when. Today, Senator Lindsey Graham proposed changing the Senate rules to allow an impeachment trial to begin immediately, even though House Democrats have yet to forward articles of impeachment. Not clear that they have the votes to do that. So right now, the process is slightly on hold as the Democrats press for more witnesses. Tom? David Wright for us tonight. David, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Dow features drop more than a hundred points in geopolitical tension. U.S. stock index were sharply lower Monday morning in ongoing geopolitical tension. And that's it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, straight here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all enjoyed watching. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.